Hey guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. Today, I'm going to be talking all about first aid kits. Now, when I made my last video log, or a couple of video logs ago, I actually was in the process of topping up one of my first aid kits. And I had uh, several people say to me, can you make a video dedicated to your first aid kit? Because it was quite interesting. Now, I can only speak for England, but when you buy a first aid kit off the shelf in this country, you're lucky to get a few plasters, um, maybe a couple of bandages, a triangle bandage and a pair of scissors and a safety pin, and that's about your lot. Um, that's basically because of some EU health and safety rules, which basically rule out you doing any, anything more than very, very, very basic stuff. If you have anything even slightly more than a little tiny cut, um, the, the implication is that you go off and get professional help um, with it. And to me, I'm kind of more of an independent thinker than, than that. I kind of like to... Um, uh, not get involved with the professional guys unless I absolutely have to, A, because I don't want to waste their time, um, and B, like I say, I'm kind of more independent thinking, a little bit of common sense, and uh, as long as I can, you know, know I can take care of uh, a wound, uh, then I really don't need to get in professional help unless, you know, there are complications. So, um, what I have to do is instead of buying first aid kits off the shelf, I have to make my own. And it can be kind of fun because you can really pick and choose exactly what you want to put in there. Now, I've got three basic first aid kits that I regularly maintain. I've got the one that I put in my car or van, um, and I always carry that with me. That's quite a comprehensive kit, um, and it's got pretty much everything I need. And when I was on holiday uh, a number of weeks ago, I actually fell over and gashed my leg quite badly on some rocks. And if I didn't have this with me, I would have had to go to hospital because it was, it was more than a few sticking plasters could take care of, you know. Um, but because I came prepared, I was able to uh, get it all sorted out there and then, you know, at the site. And uh, it was, you know, it, it saved a lot of hassle. So that's the one for the car. Now that's just recently been topped up, so I don't need to worry about that one for now. Um, then I've also got two first aid kits which I use for home. I've got the main first aid kit, which is, I think, uh, lives upstairs for the most part. And then I've got a little first aid kit for the kitchen, or what, what I normally keep in the kitchen. And once again, these are quite comprehensive. Now I'm not entirely sure of the format that we're gonna do here. I think what I'll probably do is just take out uh, items one at a time and I'll just kind of go through them and uh, talk about them and hopefully it might might be a little bit interesting obviously we do need the basics as well as like dealing with big wounds uh, you know always gonna have little wounds so um, good old-fashioned plasters uh, I just basically buy wash proof plasters I normally get a couple of packs from a local supermarket uh, and that's basically all the small cuts taken care of the only other thing, of course, is this. Uh, when you've got a wound, you need to uh, flush it, you need to irrigate it, and you need to make sure that there are no germs in it before you put the plaster on, and I use colloidal silver. Now, in this particular case, uh, today, I've just bought a large colloidal silver. It's not the cheapest of stuff in the world, so you can't buy you know, a big one like this for a first aid kit. So what I've done is I bought some little bottles uh, with some little sprays on them, and I'm gonna decant this off into the little bottles so the little bottles can now live in the first aid kit. Now next up are these. These are saline pods or saline pods. And essentially what they are, are little um, wound or eye irrigation um, pods with uh, salt water in them. And all you gotta do is you, you break one off like so. I'll show you now. And then you just twist off the cap and you've got yourself like a little like a little squirt gun. And this is completely sterile um, liquid inside, which you can actually wash uh, the wounds. You know, if you've got any dirt in the wound or anything, you can wash them out with this. And because it's like a little squirt gun, it, you, you can actually kind of direct the flow of the water. Um, and they're very, very, very useful. So I'll always carry a good supply of these. Um, and like I say, I use these uh, when I got my gash on my leg a few weeks ago. These were what I used to actually uh, irrigate the wound. 
Now, additionally, we've got more wound irrigation. Now, this is antiseptic wound ir irrigation, whereas this is just basically clean saline or clean salt water. This is actually antiseptic. So uh, it ba basically any germs or anything uh, that you've got uh, in the wound, you pour this over it and it will take care of them. But I, also, I always use this in conjunction with the colloidal silver. They pretty much do the same job. Um, this is kind of a chemical based, this is a kind of a natural based. So I tend to go for the colloidal silver more than I go for these these days. But it is nice to have both, you've got both options. Obviously uh, bandages are useful and uh, I'll generally carry uh, a, you know, a selection of various sizes, uh, so depending on the wound. Um, you know, these are uh, nice and cheap to buy as well, and they, they, these sort of things usually come in standard uh, first aid kits that you buy off the shelf. But uh, bandages, always good, there's a like, larger one there. The other thing, of course, is the triangle bandage, very, very handy for if you've, say, sprained an arm or broken an arm, or uh, it, there's, there's a number of uses that you can use the triangle bandage for. And um, it's a very, very handy uh, piece of cloth that, that you know, will come in handy in the event of uh, a, you know, a first aid emergency. Now, another thing I use is wound closure strips or stitch plasters. And hopefully you can see this. I can't take them out because it's a sealed packet. Um, but hopefully you can see this kind of piece of card here. And on this piece of card, there are eight little strips of uh, adhesive tape. And these are used for, say you've got a, uh, quite a long cut, um, instead of stitches, this, this tape, this adhesive tape will act like stitches and you can basically uh, you know, keep a wound stitched together using them. Very, very handy, uh, especially for head wounds. Um, so uh, that's another handy thing. And like I say, these are called wound closure strips. Uh, if the camera's going to focus, there we go. Now, one of the most uh, single most used things uh, in first aid that I've ever used are wound pads. And these are just basically uh, little square pieces of pad uh, that are shiny on one side and soft on the other. And you put the shiny side onto uh, the wound. And these are exactly what I used uh, when I had an accident in Wales and uh, needed to um, cover up that gash on my leg. And I had to use two of these because the gash was, was quite big. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, wound strips, absolutely essential. Um, all you've got to do is you put them on the wound and then you use a bandage to hold them in place. Um, but obviously before you do that, you need to irrigate uh, using this and then you need to sterilize using uh, sterilizing fluid or the um, colloidal silver. Now wound pads come in all shapes and sizes and if you need to, you can actually cut them to size um, with a pair of scissors. And uh, which leads me neatly onto the next item in the first aid kit, which is, if I can find them, I have to go here, is scissors and tweezers. Always useful to have uh, a decent pair of uh, scissors. These are handy for a whole host of things, uh, including cutting bandages, um, cutting fastening tape, um, and uh, of course cutting wound pads to size and the other thing of course is tweezers uh, generally I'll use tweezers for um, splinters uh, you can actually buy splinter tweezers I think I've got some here uh, specially designed for, for splinters they're especially shaped on the ends uh, so that you're much more likely to be able to grab hold of the splinter that you've got um, they're also used for uh, if you're working with cotton ball walls and, and sterilizing things. Um, you can actually handle things uh, without putting your hands all over them so you can keep things clean. So they're very, very useful and I don't think any first aid kit should uh, leave home without them. Another thing I carry uh, is a, an empty syringe. And this is a sterile sealed syringe. And these are handy for all sorts of things. Um, if nothing else, um, you can use it to draw up um, sterilizing fluid or colloidal silver and uh, in, inject it over, you know, to irrigate wounds. Um, there's all, all sorts of, of uses uh, to have these. I've, I've not used them that often, but it's nice knowing they're there. And, um, you know, if, if nothing else, they make cracking squirt guns. 
Okay, um, emergency foil blankets, uh, obviously uh, very, very useful. You generally see uh, marathon runners using these at the end of a marathon. Um, if you've never actually used one of these, if you've never put one on, they are very, very strange. Um, they, they, they're like putting on a really warm blanket and all they do is reflect your own body heat back at you, but they do it incredibly efficiently. And uh, if you wrap yourself in one of these, you'll be sweating buckets in, in no time at all. They're incredibly efficient, a really good little invention. And uh, as far as I'm aware, they were, these are NASA, uh, something to come out of NASA. I think they invented these for the space program. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but feel free to uh, let me know in the notes below. Now, these are sterilizing uh, cleansing wipes and as far as I'm aware, they are pretty much banned in most uh, first aid kits these days, especially first aid kits at work. Uh, these, these have basically been outlawed with the health and safety rules. Uh, basically, I think there are issues with um, people uh, react to them and they also have a tendency to irritate wounds uh, rather than sort of help them. I mean, they do clean the wound. Um, the idea is that they're kind of antiseptic so that they um, they actually properly clean out a wound. Um, but they can also irritate it. So I always carry some with me because if I've got a tiny little cut, they're, they're ideal. But anything, you know, slightly bigger, um, I will tend to go over to the colloidal silver uh, rather than use these things because they, they can, you know, they're not, they're not brilliant. I mean, they're good, they're handy. Um, but uh, I, I understand the reason why you generally don't get these now in first aid kits if you buy them, um, because they can be quite irritating. Okay, another handy little thing is this uh, fastening tape. This is medical tape, and it's basically basically like sellotape or, or duct tape. Uh, it rips nice and easily, so you get a nice square cut on it, like just like uh, you do with duct tape. And again, it's really useful for holding um, things in place. I mean, say for example, you've got a small cut, I mean, you could easily uh, cut up a wound pad to fit the cut, and then you could use tape like this to pretty much make your own plaster if you haven't got a plaster that's big enough. Um, so it's pretty versatile stuff. And like I say, it tears in such a way that you don't actually need scissors to cut it. It's really good stuff. Um, going on that, there's another thing called, um, this one's called Mefix. And same sort of thing, it's self-adhesive tape, but this one's kind of very, uh, very like a soft cotton. And um, again, same sort of thing, you can use it for all sorts, it's got all sorts of uses. Uh, this one's actually always difficult to get the uh, backing off of this one. There we go, look. It's the same sort of stuff, it's just like a cloth tape. And uh, again, it's, it's really useful to, um, to have in the first aid kit. This particular stuff is called uh, Mefix, M-E-F-I-X. And I'm just going to uh, get rid of that uh, bit there. There we go. Another essential ingredient is, of course, uh, gloves. Uh, these ones are latex. They're non, you definitely got to go for the non powdered ones. The last thing you want to be doing is if you're fixing a wound is have powder from the gloves go into the wound. Um, but these are pretty essential, especially if you're doing first aid on someone else. Um, you know, if you don't uh, want to pick up any uh, anything from them. I mean, you know, sometimes if you're in a, say, like a, a car crash or something and you're first on the scene, you don't know anything about the people that you're helping. Um, so these are pretty essential and uh, I wouldn't hesitate on in using them if I was performing first aid on a stranger. Um, so yeah, I've gone for, well, these particular ones are uh, latex, I don't, I don't have a problem with latex. Some people do have a problem with latex and there's another type of glove you can get made from a different material. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the material, but I'll put a note on the screen right uh, here. Where are we here? Um, so uh, you know what they are and you can use those in place of latex gloves, but really handy. And I would say essential to carry in a first aid kit. Cotton balls. Um, I have mixed feelings about these. Uh, they are useful for some things, they're very absorbent, uh, but they kind of have this habit of disintegrating while you use them. You can't use them for wound cleaning because they start leaving little fibers and stuff in the wound. And it's just kind of, you know, you don't really want to get involved with them for wound cleaning. But if you can think of a use for them, then uh, by all means include them in your first aid kit. I've got them here. I don't think I've ever used um, cotton balls uh, while I've been doing any sort of first aid kit or wound cleaning. Um, but, uh, you know, 
if you got them, they're there in case you need them. I can't think of anything I'd need them for, but there you go. Another option, um, these are not essential, but they're kind of useful. Um, if you'd sprain an ankle or something, you want to put something cold on it, uh, you've got a cool pack here. These are great. There's like a little um, bubble pack of mixture inside and you break it, shake it all up and it form, forms over these crystals and it's like having a bag of peas, you know, frozen peas that you can put on something and it could help reduce uh, any swelling. I've always generally got one in the car, but I don't think I've ever used one. I think the only time I ever used these was uh, when I was a baseball coach and we had lots of, uh, lots of uh, impact injuries from um, uh, stray baseballs and we would use these quite often. But uh, since I stopped coaching baseball, um, we tend, I, I don't think I've ever used one ever since. Um, but I, in fact, I think these are probably left over from the baseball days. Uh, that's how that's how often we use these or I use these um, but yeah it's you know it's worth having um, but uh, like I say personally I've never never used one apart from in sports uh, another fairly essential thing is safety pins uh, you, if you're going to use a bandage you're generally going to need something to uh, do it up with and safety pins are pretty handy um, obviously with bandages you could still use uh, self-adhesive tape um, but it's you know, a safety pin is uh, is pretty good, and of course, uh, safety pins are also useful if, say, for example, you've got a splinter and you can't get at it with tweezers, or you've got to dig it out a bit, um, and you've got like a pin. You know, you've got a nice sharp, uh, sharp little pointy thing there, so you can sort of dig it out a bit. Um, so yeah, really handy and well, fairly essential in a in a first aid kit, and I think pretty much any um, first aid kit that you buy will have a set of safety pins in it. Um, one thing I do uh, carry is uh, a little tube of germaline in each uh, first aid kit. This is exactly the same as uh, colloidal silver or the uh, the wound, uh, the antiseptic wound irrigation stuff, but this actually has a local anaesthetic in, in it as well. So if you have a particularly sore cut, um, you can use this stuff on it. Uh, it'll uh, disinfect the wound and it'll numb things down a little bit for you for a while. So it's pretty good stuff and I kind of recommend it. Uh, another thing I've got for emergency use is uh, something called xylocaine. And it's essentially a topical anaesthetic spray. Uh, it's basically like a liquid that whatever, um, whatever area of skin you put it on, uh, it's, it's only an external thing, but whatever you put it on, it'll numb it right down. Uh, so say, for example, you've got a really deep um, splinter that you've got to kind of, you know, gouge out. Um, it could be quite painful, but you, you spray some of this stuff on it and uh, it's going to numb everything up. Um, touch wood, so far I've never had to use it, um, but it's just kind of nice to know it's there. So that's called xylocaine. So that's pretty much all the basic stuff that I would include in a first aid kit. There's one more thing that I think anybody who makes their own homemade first aid kits may overlook, and I think this is quite important, to include some sort of basic information leaflet, pamphlet, or booklet uh, that will give you instant answers to specific scenarios. So if somebody's bleeding, if somebody's having an asthma attack, uh, if somebody's having a, you know, a certain thing happening, you can look it up straight away exactly what to do because sometimes if you're uh, in an emergency situation, you you're probably might be a bit, bit flustered, you might be a bit panicky and that's when the, the brain can stop working and stop thinking and quite often people can run around going, what do I do, what do I do, panicking. If you've got something in black and white, you can fall back on it and uh, you can literally say, right, uh, you know, my brain's gone blank, there's all this stuff happening, quickly look it up, what is the problem? Ah, there it is, okay, step one, step two, step three, and it's there, and you've got your equipment to do it with. Um, so I highly recommend uh, at least some sort of a pamphlet or a little booklet, or even, even a book. If your first aid kit's big enough, get a little book, first aid book, and it's something you can rely on uh, to tell you what to do uh, if your brain stops working. Now, most of these things you can't get in the regular supermarket. In a supermarket or, or local shops, you'll be able to get boxes of plasters and that's about your lot. So I found uh, some places online that 
sell this stuff they specialize in it um, and you, you haven't got to look far you just type in you know first aid supplies or whatever in in Google and there are several places uh, that come through the one I've used before is SP services they've been pretty good been quite impressed with them and what I tend to do is buy things in small bulk so obviously if I'm maintaining three kits here um, it's you know it's quite a lot of equipment and sometimes uh, stuff does go out of date uh, you know some of it like these um, these saline pods uh, these have got sell by dates on them or use by dates on them. Uh, they're, they're normally very, very long dates, you know, sort of 10 years or so. Um, but what I do is buy them in small, small bulk, you know, in boxes sort of this side. And, and that's enough to service the three, um, the three kits I've got here. So, um, yeah, buying in bulk is really good. I tend to go, go for those. I go for gloves in bulk. Um, what's the other things I've got? I've just had a recent... Uh, purchase uh, just I've got back from holiday actually uh, wound pads bought those in in a in sort of a box of a hundred uh, and that means you you know you got at least like 30 in each um, not that you'll ever need 30 but it's nice to know they're there uh, something else I, I bought while I was online I bought these actually specifically for the injury I got on my knee um, these are plasters none of the plasters i got were, were big enough um i could have made up wound pads but then it would have involved like putting my own tape on or bandages on or whatever so i thought all right i'm gonna go for um plasters and you actually buy plasters this size which is quite cool um so well they call it adhesive wound dressing they don't call them plasters um but um but yeah that's pretty much my first aid kits what i do for first aid um like i say i I'm, I'm unfortunately one of those people who have been born with the uh, the accident prone gene <laughs> so it's quite often I'm pulling out these kits I'm always getting cuts and bruises and all sorts of things going on so uh, life experience alone has taught me to sort of hold on to this stuff and uh, it's it's served me well so there we go anyway that's it from me i hope that was interesting useful or not whatever do feel free to leave comments in the, in the notes below let me know how you got on with this video so thanks for watching guys have a great rest of the day and i'll see you in the next video take care